So anyway, the the uh, here's all that's going on, and they've already paid a few million a few million dollars to the county each in taxes. And they said with the additional homes and that, here's another four or five that'll be coming your way shortly. With the lawsuit, and, and keep in mind that Davis County borders on the west, even though it's the top of the hill, <laughs> Morgan County's on the east, Davis County on the west. There was rumors that, oh, we'll just annex into Davis County. You get whatever problems you're suing us for, you still oh, get all geez. those, but Davis County gets the Oh, gives the authority and I guess the uh, income. So I don't know whether that played into it. Oh my gosh. Well, I have more questions for you, but it is 12. So I'm going to go ahead and just get us started. Uh, before, though, we have a little fridge over there. It's got a bunch of drinks in it. If you want your water soda. Yeah, great. Just right in that big room right there. And then on your right, there's a. Right here. Yep. Hey Michelle, hey Josh, how's it going? It's going pretty good, thanks. How are you? Doing good. Thanks for joining. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, it's new year. We've got some new members. Um, so we'll go ahead and do some quick introductions before we do kind of an overview of stuff. And we'll start with the people here in the room. And we'll start with uh, Mayor Olson. Uh, John Olson, Town of Vernon, Mayor. Uh, Dave Alexander from Oregon City, a council member. Mayor Mark Allen, Washington Terrace. Josh and then Michelle. Uh, Joshua Cook, Planning Director for Morgan County. Yes. Michelle Custer, Tula County Community Development Director. Cool, thank you very much. Um, we've got one person not uh, joining us today, and that's Stephanie Russell. She's with Economic Development at Weaver County. Um, so that's our little group. Um, I am going to do like a, oh, well, I guess I have a better note on my agenda for myself, so let's go through that. So this is the RRC, or the Regional Review Committee. Um, the responsibilities of this committee are to kind of guide how the WFRC administers the CDBG program, um, and you'll take actions on all the things kind of that we do. So that includes annually, we update our action plan which basically just outlines um, what are our goals, what do we want to achieve for the program, and, and how are we going to achieve those. Um, so we do that annually, and then every five years, we do a five-year consolidated plan. So that takes a look back at what were our goals for the last five years, and how did we do in achieving those. So you guys will review and approve those, um, as well as, you know, we have, and I'll get into a little bit more detail on what some of the things mean, but we have our um, rating and ranking policies and procedures, and um, this group will review and update those annually to make sure that they're in line with the priorities of the region. Um, what else do you guys do? That's it, and then we'll review the applications each year, which you have in your hand up. Um, last year, we updated our chair and vice chair. Um, those are two-year terms. Mayor Mark Allen here is our chair, and Mayor Olson is our vice chair. Switch. I thought you were still the chair. <laughs> I thought I would do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I might have switched that in my head, so apologies. Not a problem. <laughs> I threw an announcement as chairman of the, the WACOG, and like, uh, I'm fighting with him, I guess he was right. I might have. Co chair. No, yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, and then. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, twice. Okay. Mayor Allen also sits on the state policy committee board. So if there's, you know, state policies overview to how CDBG, you know, works, things that are in, in the state's control and changing, Mayor Allen is a voting member on that board. Um, meeting schedule, we meet four times a year. So we'd like requirements. Um, generally, we 
uh, unless we have a need to meet in November, we don't meet in November. So it's typically three times a year. Um, so February, May, and August we meet. Um, and this was included in your packet, kind of outlines the process of the funding cycle. Um, and I'll get into that in just a moment. Um, and then the last thing to know uh, about the RRC is um, we can't take any actions on things unless we have a quorum. There's six of you voting members, one elected official and one staff person from each of the three eligible counties, Tooele, Morgan, and Weaver. Um, and so we need to have at least four to have a quorum. We've got five today, so perfect. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick CDBG overview. I- Just a question on oh, the yeah, yeah. structure. I see we're made up of three counties. Mm -hmm. Other counties, uh, or the, or, you know, there's got to be other committees or other groups similar to this one. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, Utah actually does CDBG a little bit different than the rest of the states do in that other states. So we're, we're part of the small cities program or the non-entitlement. So we're population based. The larger cities and counties are part of the entitlement. CDBG program. So they get their own money directly. They can decide how they want to spend it. Um, but the small cities, other states, the small cities program is administered at the state and the state administers it for the whole, all of those smaller communities. Utah decided, you know, all of our communities, all of our regions are so different. It doesn't make sense for the state to do a top down for everything. So um, we have seven associations of government and the CDBG money is filtered through those seven AOGs. So within our region, the only three counties that meet the population criteria are Morgan, Weaver, and Tooele. It excludes Ogden City because their population is so good, big that they have their own. But all the other counties within the state are administered within their respective associations of government. Okay. Thank you. So Christy and I fight for the, our distribution Every year when we go to the Christmas nice. joins me down at the state, you have all seven of us around your table spend a whole day three course dividing up a pot of uh, yeah. funds. Yeah, the state state gets the big one. Okay. And then it is divided. And it's, there's a formula calculations that uh, Christy and I actually worked on years ago, and it's stayed pretty true to that, <laughs> which is we think is fair. I think it's pretty fair. That's worked yeah. in the past. It involves a lot. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know. Yeah, there's four criteria that go into the formula, and it's uh, percent of low income population, percent of pre 1940, 19 something housing, which yeah. we don't have a lot of, so mm -hmm. um, pre approved low moderate uh, income communities. Um, and then the last one is. Or the, the last one is just a base allocation for everybody. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, so feel free to jump in at any point. I'm going to do a CDBG overview. Um, I, you know, live in CDBG and talk about it all the time. So it's really easy for me to kind of gloss over it. Um, so if you have any questions or if anyone else here wants to go on a guess, that'd be great. Um, I'm not... I don't know how familiar you are with CDBG, so um, I'm just gonna so 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 jump in with questions. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna comment. It's a big acronym. You got the oh. Wasatch Front, you know W. Yeah, the WFRC. You got the Wasatch Front, the CBDG, and then the RRC. I think. Yeah. 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 How many letters is that? <laughs> <laughs> the alphabet. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Yes, Community Development Block Grant <laughs> Regional Review Committee. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, it was impressive. <laughs> our meetings would be way longer if we had to say all that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so it's a federal grant program. Um, Utah goes through a formula, gets their allocation, goes through another formula, as uh, Mayor Allen was just talking about for each of the seven AOGs. Um, we were, uh, should actually pull up. Sorry, I just blow this really quick. Um, and all the way to our here we go. 
Um, I mentioned this earlier that this group reviews and updates the um, regional policies and procedures each year. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, commun eligible communities um, apply, it's competitive each year, it's annual funding cycle. Um, and we have, as a group have set these policies in place. Um, some of them are state policies, but um, a lot of them are our policies. For example, the minimum grant award is 30,000 per year. The maximum grant is 300,000. Um, that can be multiple grants, but as long as the total for one community doesn't uh, exceed 300,000, uh, we raised that from 250 last year. So this is our first year with that um, limit. Um, but then when when um, applicants, when, when communities submit their application, they're scored on a very objective, objective criteria. Um, and then when we are determining funding, we start from the top and we fund all the way down as much as we can. Um, so we don't want, we want it to be very transparent. We don't want anyone to be surprised about, you know, the score of their application or anything. A community should be able to go through this and kind of determine what their score is. Um, so very straightforward. Um, just really quickly, um, the state provides a score based on pro previous project management of that community. Um, and then whether the project creates new housing units or serves chronically homeless, I should mention that the national objectives for CDBG are to provide a suitable living environment, um, prevent or eliminate slum and blight. And then uh, if there's any sort of urgent need, it can also fill that. So for example, when COVID hit, CDBG got a bunch of money to help low income people. Um, but all CDBG money has to primarily benefit at least 51% of the beneficiaries must be low to moderate income. Um, and those are um, verified through an income survey. Um, unless, and I'll just jump in on this, unless they're uh, presumed low moderate income persons and HUD defines presumed as like, um, people with disabilities or victims of domestic violence or, you know, things along those lines. Um, and then you don't have to do an income survey. Um, back to the, <laughs> the scoring. Um, if, if the project is an outcome of your moderate income housing plan, you'll get some extra points. Um, I mentioned the income survey. So when we um, in income survey uh, applicants, they're categorized into three categories, 30%, 50%, 80% or below the average median income. Um, obviously, like you get more points, the more low income people are. So we um, track how, how many low income people and how low of an income those um, beneficiaries are, or whether again, they're part of that presumed group I was talking about or a targeted group. A targeted group would be like, if an, if an application comes through for, for the actual construction of a domestic violence shelter, and it's presumed that 100% of the people who are gonna benefit from that are low. Um, we give people additional points based on their match. The match is recorded kind of on a sliding scale, so we wouldn't expect you know, a large, larger community to provide Get the same amount of points for the same match for a smaller community. We understand they have different budget limitations. Um, the maturity of the project, regional quality planning. Please, if you have any questions, jump in. These kind of speak for themselves a bit. Um, whether or not you've received CDBG funding recently and how recently you received them, you'll get additional points. Um, and then this category 10 right here is kind of one of the main focuses that we focus on each year for updating. Uh, we want to make sure that these priorities are still in line with what's going on around the region. So for some years now, we've had low and moderate income housing activities as the highest regional priority. As we all know, we know there's a big, a big gap in housing and, um, particularly in this climate, you know, with funding, housing activities and things like that. We'll caveat that CDBG money can't actually be used in the construction of housing, but um, the construction of everything up to the front door of housing. So whether that's facility, 
any belt insulation or road insulation or things like that for low income housing. Um, the next highest one is public utility infrastructure. Um, so that includes like water, sewer, roads, everything like that. Um, that's the second highest because that's the most common application that we get. So, you know, from that, we infer that that's a great need in our, yeah. in our regions. Uh, the third public service activities, um, those are uh, from applicants that are nonprofits. Nonprofits are eligible to apply, but can only receive up to 15% of the total of our total funding. So if we receive a million dollars, only $150,000 can be spent on nonprofit activities. Right, it has to be sponsored by the city or county. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your CDBG. Um, second to last is community facility, the removal of ADA barriers, and then last but not least, public health and safety equipment. So, fire equipment, etc. Uh, more points based on more beneficiaries. So, if it's community wide compared to site specific, cost benefit ratio. Um, Property tax rate, this is included in there because we have talked about, you know, awarding, uh, awarding communities who are trying to help themselves by implementing property tax. Um, and then the last two are extras. If you've included in your application ADA or civil rights compliance measures, then you get additional points. Um, so that was... Super quick hitting, <laughs> just kind of a, what we've got in place right now and what um, you can expect to uh, look at later on in the year when we go to update those again. Um, what percent of your time do you spend on the CDBG, this group? So it's, this uh, activity? it's, it's only one of my roles. I have multiple roles. So I would say Depending on the time of year, I would say if you're looking at it from a year chunk, yeah, yeah, I would so say 40%. Okay, um, I would say from like November to January, closer to 40, 60%. Um, and you'll see why here. So this is kind of um, the schedule of the funding cycle. Uh, it starts in August or October because the fiscal year starts in July. <laughs> um, so it, if you're awarded CDBG funds, those funds are available July 1st for the applicants. But um, for uh, for this, for this group, this is kind of our role throughout the year, starts in the fall. Uh, we host a how to apply workshop. Uh, well, okay, so first we update the reading ranking criteria, which is what we just went over. Um, and then we host a how to apply workshop. It is required of all applicants that they attend. Um, that's in the fall and then uh, from the how to apply workshop until January 31st, you're working on your application. It's a state run online application process that automatically closes at 5 p.m. on January 31st. So you've got to get working on your application. That includes holding public hearings, doing your income survey, all of that. Um, February, March, we're reviewing those applications. Um, we're scoring them, we're reviewing them, I'm meeting with the state to make sure that they meet all the eligibility requirements. Um, and then they're notified in March or April. Um, and then they've got to attend a grantee workshop. And then the application opens again and they got to you know, do a couple of additional steps and then the money is available in July. So I noticed in reviewing the information there are, are dates specific that come up during the year, i.e. public hearings and so mm -hmm. forth. Do you make the uh, committee aware of those? Of the public hearings? Or other important dates? Here's a deadline for an application, or here's a deadline for a public hearing, or a 30 day. Yeah, at, at the How to Apply workshop, we go, it, those are more specific to the actual applicants mm -hmm. themselves. And so um, just this last year, we made it a requirement that uh, I have, you have to schedule a meeting with me, each applicant, before or by December 15th, because there are these strict um, hearing, you know, deadlines and things like that. You think that helped? I mean, I think so. A couple of couple applicants had to redo their hearings, yeah, I know but they got them in time. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got yours, right? 
got got a, the hearing in. Yeah, the shear, sweet. Um, nice. Yeah, just to make sure that they have ample time. If something was done incorrectly, they have ample time yeah. to fix it before that January 31st deadline. So not blindsided, then I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I review all applications by January 15th. If you don't have, you know, all your stuff in there by January 15th, like you know that, and so you run the risk of, of missing something or losing something, but you've had ample time to meet with me and all these things beforehand. So if it's last minute, you know. Uh, that was super, super quick, high level overview. Any additions from the group or questions from anyone? Well, speaking of that application process last year, we talked a little bit about it, but we, we improved it, got you more involved. And uh, last year we had what, three disqualifications? Yeah, I think so. This year, so far, zero. Yeah. Right, so mm -hmm. we've did a lot yeah, better this year. Good sign. That yeah. We, yeah, we were, yeah, and they were nitpicky things. Oh, yeah. Right, Mayor? <laughs> nitpicky things. Well, yeah, that's why I felt it was important. <laughs> that, that interview, I think, with you is yeah crucial. Yeah, I checked with, in my city, I checked with my gal that does it, and she said, oh, yeah, Christy, I met Christy Zoom or whatever. And, and uh, so, yeah, so Christy did her job, but it worked. She's got a checklist that's, you know, yeah. it's long, and I mean, but still, there's nitpicky yeah. stuff that, Federal grant. The federal, mm -hmm. yeah. federal wants to see for some reason. East to have them. They're yeah. not that nitpicky back east. I know that. <laughs> yeah, if, less, if there's but... like one word missing from your posting on the public notice website about your public hearing, you could be disqualified. Really? Yeah. That, that was me last year. One word. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the. There was, there was three of them just like that. Yeah. And, and it happens every year in every region constantly. Right. And then we couldn't even give away all our money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we talked about that once. Because we only had four or something that after to qualify. Or three or four that qualified. So we had money left over. And Does that, that money roll over or is that gone? Well, I don't know what. What is what do we uh, do with that? We made our decision. Well, we talked about that right. and said that we we made a deal where those people that did qualify could uh, request that extra money so we could at least get it. Yeah, know, that's right. That's right. Yep. This year they can, if, excuse me, the, I mean, as you know, construction costs, material costs going up, up, up. Um, so if, you know, when the time comes, you don't actually have enough money, you can ask for up to 10% contingency if we have that money left over in the funds. But all the unused money at the end of the fiscal year goes back into the state pot and then is divided, you know, seven ways. Not equally, but through the formula. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we want to use every penny. Yeah, for sure. sure. So. And, and we struggle a little bit in our region if we have leftover money. That was the first year we've ever had leftover money. Yeah. But in our region, we don't, WFRC doesn't have, you know, a revolving loan fund or like a housing fund like the other AOGs do. So they can just... They have extra money just go ahead and put it in their housing fund or something and then they don't have to worry about getting money back but we don't have that and so it's a little bit harder for us we just want to make sure we get it all out there um i will say the i mentioned the three hundred thousand dollar cap on communities um we do we are the only region that offers a multi-year grant um and so in a multi, up to two years so in a multi-year you can get two hundred thousand each year so it brings a total up to four hundred thousand but however, if we have leftover money, we can go to that applicant and say, you wanted 400 over two years, but how about instead of 200 each year, you get 250 this year and 150 next year and see if we can't do it that way. And that will be the case this year, possibly. Yeah. We'll go. Um, okay, like I said, I know I'm going through this super duper quick, so interrupt. We're, we're a laid back group. <laughs> um, next, we've got approval of the minutes from the August RRC meeting. Oh, yeah. Minutes were in your packet. Yes. So, we'll have to get read over those. Uh, any questions or concerns on those minutes? 
not, I'd entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Move to approve and adopt. I'll second. We have a second. Rachel, thank you. Any other discussion on those? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Approved. <clears throat> Very good. Um, also included in your packet was the draft annual action plan. Uh, if you've had time to review that and provide any comment. Christy, on those on those population numbers, I it looks like some of those are, are rather high. I don't know if it really matters. I mean, nothing in here is due to population except for uh, what the match, the mm -hmm. only thing that mm -hmm. would be affected by population. I just noticed I pretty well keep track of the numbers when we were county, mm -hmm. and I know there was a couple that were pretty high. I, so I don't know where you get that figure or what. That's a good note. I'll um, also say that none of them moved up a bracket, if that makes sense. So okay. you, even, you referenced the match. Right. The, those right. are in population brackets. So nothing moved out of a bracket. I'll also say that these are the same numbers as last year because we were able to get uh, projections from the census data, okay. but they have not changed since last year. So if I were to try and update them, I would have to go to kind of more obscure yeah. websites no, like... and they don't provide populations for all the cities. And so it wouldn't be okay. consistent. So I noted in here um, that they're uh, 2023 population based on the population projection data. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I assumed that they wouldn't have changed so much that it would have changed the brackets. Yeah. And so yeah. I felt, okay, leaving them in there for yeah, now, but that, yeah, I wasn't even going to bring it up, but they are, they're slightly different. I know Riverdale city is not nearly that, that high yet, or upper okay. city is not quite that high yet, but they could be by next month. <laughs> right. So <laughs> the, the winter communities, uh, would take two months to increase that far. So. But yeah, it doesn't. Okay. The only thing it would affect would be, like, say, the uh, match. I don't think it would even affect those who were to do that. So I'll make sure to keep an eye on those. Okay. Any other comments from anybody? Uh, just as a FYI, these are out for public comment right now for our HUD requirements. There's a 30 day public comment period. That opened a week or two ago, and we'll go into the first week of March. Um, and then a public open house for people to come in person will be taking place on Thursday. Never had a single participant <laughs> <laughs> show up, so if you need me, I have a whole hour block off. <laughs> you don't get through all these refreshments out there, and yes. you know, like, it's all good now. Yes. Yeah. 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 You don't yeah. offer good enough refreshments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you guys need to need to get a billboard, Chris. Face up there. <laughs> come hang out with me. Please come I, I think there's probably dozens of people trying to find the place, but they can't. <laughs> you yeah. 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 You've got a 2023 20, plan. I've got oh. a copy of the 2024. We reviewed. Oh. Are they both for review today? Nope. Nope. Good catch. Good catch indeed. That must have just been accidentally been included from the last year's local packet. That <laughs> I kept reading that. Okay. Well, it was 2023 when we applied, so was it mm -hmm. really the 2023? And then, unless it was a like fiscal year, I that couldn't remember. Yeah, and then I couldn't 23 remember. 24. I think yeah. it is a fiscal year, is yeah, it tricks me up 24 to 24. I know, so I thought, oh, I'll just... well, I guess we're actually in the 23 plan right now. And if it's if it goes, I, I goes to the end of June, it goes to June, yeah. end, end of June, yeah, 23 24. 23. Yes. And then the new one starts. It's confusing because it's titled calendar year, but it actually yeah. goes through the fiscal year, so. yeah, so it's kind of. It's a mess. It's a mess. What would they tell me? It's no. not a mess. <laughs> you have it all under control. If there's no other comments, and, and this is not your only opportunity to provide comments, as I mentioned, the 30 day public comment period is open, public open house taking place. So if you, you know, are needing some sleeping materials or reading through it and you have a comment <laughs> at some point, let me know. Or refreshments. <laughs> or refreshments. Okay, so it looks like we do need action on that to approve the 
annual action plan. Is there any discussion on that? Any suggestions at this time? And it can be approved um, pending, you know, any comments or changes needed based on comments. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I would entertain a motion. I move to approve, if I'm not able to, the uh, 2024 annual action plan with the uh, stipulation that uh, we review any uh, comments from the uh, public hearing. I'll second that. Okay, well put. We have a motion to second. Any discussions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Review project applications. Now the exciting part, yes. And I apologize to those of you online. I will send out an email right after this. Um, the rating and ranking is hot off presses, so it was not included in a packet. Um, I'll also caveat this that I am meeting with the state tomorrow to review all qualifications. And so fingers crossed, no one's disqualified. All the public hearings were posted correctly, which is their favorite method of disqualification. Um, and I did not see anything life-threatening on any of these. So, um, but, you know, it's up to the discretion of the people at DWS, but fingers crossed that nothing will get disqualified. I'll do my best to give you people online a quick overview. We don't have a, a final annual allocation yet. We typically get that from the state in February or March. So the current number that's in there is just based on last year's allocation, which is at 1.3 million. We received six applications, um, seven if you include the application from WFRC for the planning and admin to carry out the grants each year. Um, totaling um, a little under a million, meaning that we have about 44,000 left over. Um, but as mentioned earlier, we do have one multi-year grant. So we have the opportunity to hopefully contribute to that project and have no money left over. Um, so of those six projects, I'd also like to caveat that um, the state provides a score for uh, criteria number one, which is capacity each year. Um, and so pending the state scores, these rankings could change a little bit. Um, probably not much. Um, so, oopsie. So remind me what capacity is. Get state. Yeah, so that is. What's in there? What is that? I don't know if they're just seeing the blank screen now, but. Um, that is, so prior experience of the state working with that grantee, have they been timely with their reports? Have they completed it in the necessary time of completion, provided all necessary details, been responsive to emails, carried out the project responsibly and, and all of that good stuff. Um, if you're a first time grantee, you get an automatic two and a half points out of five as a first time grantee. Okay. From the state. From the state, yeah. So, so who does that? Is it the group we meet with? Yeah. The state level, that group. Yeah, but I'll find these out tomorrow right. when I meet with, so right. it'll be Zach. Okay. That. Right. And hopefully, you know, this is his first year in there, so hopefully he's got notes on <laughs> prior years. See how nice he is. He'll be unbiased. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah. He's overwhelmed that he'll be unbiased. <laughs> Yeah. Um, which is better. Right? Um, just a little background for you. We had a um, state CDP administrator named Cheryl. She was great. She did it for like 37 years or something. She retired three years ago. Yeah. Um, she hired someone in her place. She did it for about a year. Then someone else came in, did it for six months. Then someone else came in, did it for six months. And now Zach's been in it for... Six months. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, close to a year, probably. Oh, good. Um, the good thing about Zach, he's, he used to have my position at another AOG, so he's worked with CDBG before, so he's familiar with the program. Um, How long has yeah, the program been around? How many years? You say she was there 30? 
37. Yeah. yeah. Oh, in Utah, I want to say right around that, probably 40. Okay. Yeah. The second question, do you expect a similar amount then for an annual allocation? Ballpark, yeah. Any significant changes, or do you know ahead of those ahead of time if there's going to be something significant coming down? I don't. There was a couple of years there where the allocation was going down mm -hmm. on a statewide level. In the last few years, it's picking up again. So that's good news. I will say, um, I think nearly every region had to give back money because they couldn't spend it all mm -hmm. and they put it into their housing program, but if they don't spend it in their housing program, they still have to give it back, which typically happens each year. So I imagine it will be no less than this amount. Okay. Oh, really? I think yeah. so. Unless the federal government dropped it. Probably the highest I've seen. Yeah. And the, yeah. I remember years and years ago, it didn't drop, I don't know, if you were. It was like dropped a little under a million. Yeah. yeah. 900, even 898. Yeah. It's got kind of, Dicey What's that based on? How do they base how much money? Yeah. The federal government? Or they give it to the state and the state just oh, yeah. equally divides it. The state how does the federal, formula. How the federal government decide how much Utah gives? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, They've got a similar yeah. formula yeah. to what comes from the state, HUD, right? Mm -hmm. It's a department of HUD. Housing and urban development. And so, yeah, it's always, it was a yeah. state, see there. state level city. Did I see Department of Workforce Services that administer that? Yeah. Yep. So it goes from HUD to DWS to us. That is, I mean, is that a proper place to have it administered? Or are there other departments that could do it better that would more align with what they're charged to do? Um, that's a good question. So there's actually a division of DWS called HDD, the Housing and Community Development Group. Okay. And so it goes. Through DWS through HCD, uh, so they're a branch. DWS. You'll find out this number tomorrow as well. I don't know if I'll find out tomorrow number, or not. Okay. Maybe in March. Okay. When we have our policy meeting, which not to derail us, but they haven't sent a calendar invite, and I get I completely forgot about this, but they're planning on having it in Richfield. Oh, that's right. So, and I don't in know March. if I'm going to be able to make it that day because it's not on my calendar, so my calendar got full. <laughs> Which means my calendar. I think March 13th. Um, okay, anyway, sorry about that. Um, so the first, as of now, ranked project is Washington Terrace. Oh, it's actually not AMI accent. That's not on there. Yeah, I wonder what that was. <laughs> that was from last year. Um, Romer Park improvements. They've got a... Um, parking lot in their community park that is at the end of its life and needs replacing. Um, so that got a lot of points. It's community wide benefit. This um, is you. Yeah. They they do all the extras, so they get all the ADA and the the title for you know at the end there for a rating ranking, and they provided a rather large match. So brings them up there to the front top. Wendover, we haven't seen Wendover in a year or two, um, but they typically apply every year. They don't have to do a survey. Their um, HUD recognizes them as a primarily LMI community. And then um, they, you know, they're way out there in the desert. Their main source of water is somewhere else in Tooele County. So they just got miles and miles and miles and miles of their water line to, to the city. Um, and they have just been replacing it in previously $250,000 increments, now $300,000 increments. So this is phase six of what's bound to be, you know, 20 phases of replacing their water. <laughs> just line. not going, they just, yeah. just, when they're done, then it starts one more at a time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, 20, something like that. <laughs> Merritt really? Slaterville. Um, they lose points, though, because they're subsequently recurring. With that, does that affect their? They get a little bit, but not to qualify. So that's a good question. You have, if you received a grant in the previous year, you have to have spent down at least fifty percent of last year's grant to be eligible to apply for a new grant. Um, but they have. But there's maybe, no takeaway because it's our eighth project of the same. The only takeaway is that. If you were funded last year, you get one point. If you were funded two years ago, you get two points. If it was three or more years ago, you get three points. If you've never been funded, you get five points. That's a good question. 
Um, Merrick Sigerville is doing a um, sewer water installation for a that's, LMI. That's community. the multiple year one. Yep, multiple mm -hmm. years. Um, pretty large match. So you might notice here that Merritt Slaterville, Vernon, and Weber County all scored 33 points. Uh, we have in our policies and procedures that in the event of a tie, um, the, do you remember, uh, the first distinguishing factor is criteria number 10. So the regional priority, <clears throat> the higher the priority, you know, if one's a five and one's a three, the five gets ranked higher. Um, and then if it's still a tie after that, whoever provides the highest match. So Merritt, Slaterville, and Vernon both had a, a five on the regional priority. However, Merritt, Slaterville pre provided a higher match, so they were put ahead of Vernon. Um, but Vernon had a higher priority than Weber County, so they were placed higher than Weber County. Um, Vernon is doing taking a page out of Wendover's book, doing a phase one of Main Street reconstruction. Uh, Community-wide, uh, didn't have to do an income survey, uh, also on the HUD LMI list, so that's great. Weaver County, this one um, might be DQ'd, actually, I forgot to mention this, um, because the project is located in Ogden City. I'm going to fight for it as much as I can. Um, as mentioned earlier, Ogden City is excluded because they are entitlement, mm -hmm. so they get their own CBG funds. So technically, mm -hmm. non-entitlement money is not allowed to be spent within the entitlement community, but it's for a community center, ADA upgrades, that is owned and operated by the county. Oh, no, right. no city funds contribute to this community mm -hmm. center. So I'm going to fight for it. We'll see, yeah. but... I'm not okay. super optimistic that the state will allow it. You've conveyed that to the applicant? <laughs> not yet. I don't want to, okay. to get his hopes up. But this was one that was started, the application was started after January 15th. And so, you know, they ran the risk of oh, okay. doing the work and not getting feedback and all that stuff. So I think, I think he'll, he'll understand. Hmm. Uh, and then last but not least, switch point sponsored by Tooele County and applying for a vehicle purchase to um, transport non-perishable goods from donation centers to like, the distribution centers and residents and things like that. So um, that's one example of like a 100% LMI beneficiary. Uh, those beneficiaries are pre-income qualified to receive the benefits from that nonprofit. So. So that is all of our projects. Again, um, 44,000 left over. If the Weber County ones is not able to be funded, we'll have, you know, 160-ish left over. I think Mary Slaterville would be able to use that right off the bat, hopefully. Um, yeah. Could they, re they could, then they could receive more than 300,000, right? <clears throat> yeah, uh, so we still limited the multi-year one-year grant to two hundred thousand, so four hundred total. We didn't raise right. that two hundred maximum. Right, but if we so, were to give them yeah any leftover, they could go yeah up to what? We don't have a limit. Oh, but it's, well, but it's subtract from it's subtract what? Subtract from next year. Yeah, so exactly. Work. I mean, Perfect. actually, we do have a limit because the total limit is four hundred. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Right. Well, we have to we have to re approve that ranking list of applications. May I just suggest, as chairman, that where we have plenty of money, that maybe we put in our our motion that we wholeheartedly support the Weaver County receiving that because they're owned and operated by Weaver County, and maybe you, if we have a unanimous vote, maybe that would help yeah, Christy and Mono and, and say, hey, to. our group. Have strong full support that we were counting shit because of that reason. Mm -hmm. We're not knocking anybody out of the out of the list. We're not taking money away from anybody, really. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 And it's not, you know, it's not just benefiting Ogden City, it's benefiting the, the whole county. county. Right, right. Anybody have any heartache with that if we 
do that? No. Okay, I don't hear any screams. Or... <laughs> With that, I'll make I'll uh, move that we approve the ranking list of applications and uh, with the caveat that we support Weber County getting uh, their grant for the ADA upgrades for their elevator in their community center. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion from anybody? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. That does pass. So, well, maybe you've got a little bit of support. Awesome. Yes. Bit of the support of the group, and uh, we feel like it's probably okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay. All right. Um, that takes us through the end of our agenda. Um, just as a reminder, our, our next meeting will be taking a look at those rating and ranking criteria and discussing any potential updates. Um, those need to be finalized in August, so it's good that we talk about it at our next meeting, probably think about it, and, we leave, and then, yeah. When's our next meeting? May? May. 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 Let's see. Fourteen. Oh, just kidding. That's not it. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> Same time and place. Same time and place. You mentioned it for those communities that get grant money. There's a grantee workshop. When is that usually held? March. In March. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we'll make sure. Christy. Yeah, I have a question about applications. So, not that Tula County is opposed to any of the applications that have been submitted under Tula County, but we oftentimes don't even know they've been submitted until we see this list. I don't know how we end up a sponsor for applications we're not even <laughs> aware of. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I will talk with Switchpoint and see who she was communicating with. Okay. Like the Boys and Girls Club, I understood that one. They had thought they were submitting under Twila City and then Department of Workforce Services recommended that they do it under the county. Um, the housing authority, it wasn't until she sent us the or the contract to sign that we even knew they had applied under it. <laughs> okay, interesting. Not sure how we catch these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. Um, they get signed by the council council chair, um, but that's interesting. Yeah, I'll I'll talk to them and see. Bullock County had to sponsor them. Yeah, and it. It, yeah, it probably does get confusing because I come up there and do the public hearing. And during the public hearing, we don't specify the projects until the second public hearing. So um, I just assume that <laughs> they've been talking to you. And then we just do that same public hearing at once. But I will I'll make sure that <laughs> you guys are... We'll figure out some <laughs> process. But it's my department that has to make sure we attend the workshop and that the reporting gets done and all of that. And... <laughs> yeah, okay. aren't aware of them until we <laughs> start getting email. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you for like being the, flexible. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Rachel, what is Rochelle? Rochelle? What's Switch Rochelle? What is? Um, Switchpoint is the company that's doing the homeless shelter that was just opened up at the old Harris. The old what? The old Harris Elementary, Mayor. Oh, okay, okay. They also run the thrift store that's on Main Street and the part of the food bank. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So they are private. All right. All right. Well, um, everyone gets 11 minutes back. Thank you for coming, everybody. Uh, and I'll, I'll send that rating ranking sheet over to um, you guys. Again, apologies for not including it in your packet. Okay, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for watching, Christy. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just write down the names of all the members.